Who has better sex, humans or bonobos? That's a question my friend asked me this morning. And I think it's fascinating because if you look at bonobos, um, they are one of the great, one of the four types of great apes. And they actually have very human-like sexuality. They, in 29% of cases, they actually um, uh, engage in sexual interactions belly to belly. <clears throat> and the females seem to especially um, prefer this position and even push the males a little bit in that position. So they might even have eye contact during sexual intercourse. They have um, mouth to genital stimulation genital genital of course uh, they have um, the bonobos they even kiss each other with the tongue like in really long kisses from mouth to mouth and chimpanzees which is one of the other types of great apes uh, they also seem to kiss each other on the mouth sometimes but without tongue this time mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, bonobos have really been observed having long tongue kisses amazing right and they don't only have sex to procreate, like you might think, okay, animalistic sex is something, you know, just like quick and just to produce, uh, to produce, produce offspring. But actually there's quite a few species uh, of animals that procreate also outside the time when they are able to conceive. So uh, a lot of carnivores or some carnivores, um, Dolphins and bonobos, chimpanzees, they actually might have sex many, many times, some more than a thousand times, they copu um, more than a thousand times per birth, they copulate. So that's much more than would, uh, strictly speaking, be necessary. Um, other species like the gorilla, they really just copulate around ovulation and they will uh, then maybe only have 25 copulations per birth. So there's different theories why the animals are actually doing this. So there are four factors besides conception for why they might be engaging in sexual interactions. So one is paternity confusion. So amongst chimps, it might be, for example, that the, <clears throat> the females, by having sex with a lot of males, uh, especially around ovulation, they might have like get the effect that the males don't really know who is the father of, of the infant that is then being born later and uh, by this um, they are kind of protect, protecting their offspring because if male chimps think that the infant is not theirs they might actually kill it harm it or ignore it at the least so yeah the, the females just get more support by males if they have uh, sexual interactions with a lot of them. So that's paternity confusion hypothesis. Then another one is uh, that um, the animals are practicing sexual interactions when they have sex outside conception times, so especially in youth. So male chimpanzees, for example, only start producing sperm around their 15th year of age but they're already active, sexually active as infants even. So they've been sexually active for 12 to 14 years uh, before they can reproduce. And the females also, they have about 60% of their lifetime sexual interactions they have in adolescence in a time when they are not uh, able to conceive yet. Interesting, right? And the idea is that maybe they are kind of practicing and exploring their sexuality in that age. It's not quite um, perfectly thought out because um, even the authors of the paper that I read say that yeah but you don't really need that much practice they wouldn't normally need that much practice so there must be more reasons for why they are engaging in these sexual interactions so exchange is another one so male uh, female chimps that engage in sexual interactions, they are more likely to get food from the males and to get to be to be groomed by them. And the other way around, if a male is grooming a female and is taking her out to dinner, sharing his food a lot, then he's more likely to be able to copulate with her. So these are all rational reasons in a way, like 
like nature rational reasons and there's also one um, that is another reason that might be true especially for bonobos is communication so in bonobos really social bonds are being formed through sexuality so for example it seems to be the case that many younger females are actually approaching older females for example and then trying to have sexual interactions with them and they are really really going into it rubbing their genitals to each other moaning this kind of thing like to orgasm and the idea is that the females bond with each other and that might even give them protection not to get coerced to sex by males if they have these strong female bonds then in bonobos it seems to also be the case that they protect themselves from aggression through sexuality or they calm down aggression through sexuality so for example there was a story that i read about a bonobo male bonobo approaching two female bonobos who were eating and then the female one of the female bonobos was like getting angry i think it was an infant um, like oh this is our food and then the male bonobo just took one of them and just <laughs> lay her down and like uh, rubbed his genitals on her apparently true story and she calmed down and was like oh yeah sure you can have uh, food with us and then they were able to share the food together without aggression and a last point is to repair relationships after there was aggression so after fights they often will have sexual interactions or touch each other's genitals etc so it's kind of like makeup make up sex <laughs> as in humans so <clears throat> by the way bonobos also have uh, a large clitoris and chimpanzees have been observed masturbating yep. by uh, yeah rubbing the clitoris in fact so yeah i find it very fascinating because i think it freaks people uh, out a lot when they go in the zoo and they see <laughs> bonobos especially because they have really sexual interactions that are very similar to ours and that really makes us feel like oh are we really animals like that like are we really just acting like animals hormones and and that's such a strange contrast because this is like biological like an instinct apparently when you see it in animals but on the same at the same time it's something so it's seen as something so sacred uh, in humans um, something yeah that has to do with love in some cases or in many cases hopefully so it's really this contrast between this animal nature of sex and the the sacred and and the, the higher love connection kind of uh, aspect of sexuality and Yes, yeah, so I think that's why people get a bit embarrassed when they see animals having sex. But you could also see it the other way around. Like maybe the animals also really have these higher dimensions of sexuality, especially with bonobos now. You can really see that they are not only having sex for reproduction and many other animals also don't have just sex for reproduction. So they might actually really have, uh, reproduct uh, have sexual interactions for pleasure and for for connection just like humans probably not quite just as humans but similar so who has better sex bonobos or humans i cannot tell you exactly but maybe you found some of these facts interesting for sure bonobos are having really good time